Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this first talk on the Saturday morning. Um, today, we're going to talk about technical architect role, a career path for some developers. Uh, so technical architect, who heard about this before, like the role? Yeah, yeah. Oh, nice. <laughs> so that's obviously a, a name that you've encountered if you are working in the development industry. Uh, but do you really know what that means? Do you really know what they do? Well, today we're going to explore and challenge the mysteries and stereotypes about TAs. Let's go. So first of all, a big thank you to the Drupal North uh, organizers and all the people that uh, are making, who are making this possible. And thank you to the sponsor. So today, uh, here, uh, here is uh, what our journey is gonna look like. I'm going to introduce uh, briefly myself, uh, and therefore, uh, I'm gonna give you a context um, of the talk, and then I'm going to talk about what's a TA at therefore. I also collected some testimonials uh, from TAs, and then we, we, we're going to see how can one become a TA if he or she wants to. And then we, we're gonna draw a quick conclusion and we're gonna have some time for some question and answer. All right, so quickly, how about me? My name is Justine. I am a web developer from Belgium. I've been working with Drupal for five years now. I started with Drupal 7, so I'm not like that old. <laughs> Uh, I moved to Toronto two years ago, and since then I started to attend a lot of events in the, in the community, so I'm often going to the Drupal TO meetups. For those who are from Toronto, maybe you know that meetup. Um, I try to uh, go to, the, to all the Drupal sprints uh, weekends, where I met some amazing guys. Um, I also uh, attended the Drupal North Ottawa last year and my very first DrupalCon in Nashville this year. It's amazing, I really love this community and that's why I'm here today to give a little bit back, right? So yeah, don't hesitate to come and talk to me. I am at the Therefore booth upstairs. You can come and talk about Drupal or, I don't know, travels, cats, Belgian chocolate, TV shows, whatever. We can talk about everything. So I am currently working uh, at Therefore. Therefore is a digital agency and we are specialized in UX strategy, UI design, content strategy and content architecture. And we are working uh, specifically with open source uh, technology like Drupal. We are established uh, since 2005 and our headquarters are in Toronto, Liberty Village. We are currently 20, 21 employees, but we keep growing and we are always looking for new talents to hire. So if you are interested, don't hesitate, come and talk to me. Um, and also, I want to say thank you for, uh, to Therefore for being one of the Drupal North sponsor and also sponsoring the great night yesterday at the regular room. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, the context of this talk, well, I was uh, just telling you that uh, Therefore is growing constantly. So, that's exactly the context, growth. Um, I've been like experiencing it for two years now at Therefore. We are getting more clients, bigger pro projects, and we are constantly hiring people, new talent, the team is growing. So at some point, 
we were like, okay, uh, I think we need like something, you know, uh, an additional layer of management leadership that would be like somewhere in the intersection of the development teams, the project management, and the greater business vision. And that's when we introduced uh, the technical art architect role in the landscape. So just a quick disclaimer here because, uh, before we go further. I am not a TA. I am just a developer and I was very curious about this uh, new role that appeared in the, in the landscape at Therefore. So I wanted to do some research myself about that and I've been playing the journalist. So I, I was just thinking, okay, uh, maybe I can share my research with you guys. Maybe it's interesting, but I am not a TA. It's not gonna be uh, like experience feedback talk, right? Also, another disclaimer, I, during my research, I encountered many, many names for this role, like leadership, management, technical role. Some people are talking about, I don't know, solution architect, uh, senior engineer, senior developer, tech lead. I don't know, I, I've, I've found many, many names. So let's not argue about how this is called. Like, I'm just talking today about what's a TA at there for. So that being said, let's move on to the heart of the matter. What's a TA there for? Well, in very short, uh, a TA there for is a developer who is responsible for leading a development team. What does that mean? So that means that the TA is gonna be responsible for the technical approach, but also all the human side of the team. They are bringing a unique blend of management skill leadership skills within the technical context of the development team as we know it. Okay, so what do they do exactly? Uh, well, I can tell you that they are switching hats a lot. So let's expand a little bit uh, every, every aspect of the role. So as the name tells it all, TAs are architects. What does that mean? So they will be responsible um, for all the technical decision, for like um, the, the technologies that are going to be used, like in the scope of a project or company-wide. We are asking them for their advice and their opinion. Uh, they also need to make sure the, the project, the, the, applica the application architecture, is gonna fit the business needs. Fit the business need, yes, for the present, but also for the future. They need to think about the application evolution and the maintainability. Um, so when you know your client, when you understand uh, their needs, you know how the application may evolve in the future. And knowing that, you can make better decision about the thing that you're going to implement. So you know you're going to be able to uh, evolve the, the application. They are working with the team of developer and they are making sure that everyone uh, understand the broader architecture of the project. They establish with them and they validate their understanding. And as they learn, as the developer are like solving problems and um, understanding more and more uh, while they are working on the project, well, sometimes architects can say, okay, we will adjust because now we know this and we will adjust the the architecture, the logic. Uh, on the other end, they also, um, 
enforcing, like uh, making sure that everyone is respecting the standards and the processes of the company, so the productivity is boosted. Um, enforces uh, the standards and processes, but they need to stay open to innovation, right? It's not just like this and we don't try anything else and no, they need to be able to, to say, okay, this time we can try a new tool and see how it goes and like experiment a little bit and stay open to changes if it's good for the productivity. And finally, they are responsible of the overall code base quality of the project and the documentation, which no one likes, but it has to be there, right? So it's very important to make sure it's there. TAs also manage people. So as I said, uh, besides the technical part of the job, there is a big human side of the job. And as developer, uh, we spend most of the time coding, right? It's us, the computer, and we code, and yeah, we, we are reading about new, new tools and new technologies that could like solve our problem more efficiently. But the other people, it's not really our problem, right? We can say, okay, not my problem. I'm focusing on my task, on my code, and I'm not really caring about my teammates. But the TAs, he's leading the team, so he's responsible to manage and to deal with people. The people in the team, in the development team, that means they are technical, but also he's dealing with people outside the development team. That means sometimes, most of the time, non-technical people. So to be able to lead a team efficiently, they need to be able to give and receive feedback from everybody, which is not always easy. And they will, they will need to help everyone in the team develop their own learning path and they need to like drive them to that direction, right? This, this like human leadership, mentorship skills, it's not something as developer we are prepared for, right? We, we don't really train those skills and build up those skills uh, on a daily basis. So that's something that uh, they need to like learn. So as I just said, TAs mentor and support their developers' growth. Um, a TA can measure his efficiency uh, by measuring the efficiency of his team. And um, how can you make a team better? Well, you, you can make every, each individual in the team better and it's gonna, be, it's gonna make automatically the team better, right? So how, how do we do that? Uh, you need to spend time you need to find the time to, to spend uh, with everyone and understand their background, the, their strength, their interest, and their goal. What, what do they want to do? Uh, what do they want to become? So knowing that, they have like a better idea of how everybody can work together as a team and be efficient. That also means sometimes managing conflicts, right? Because, well, people are people. Uh, you cannot like make two people be friends or something. So sometimes you have to manage conflicts. And yeah, and some, some day someone can feel like a bit less, I don't know, efficient. Something in their private life is not going so well. So. It has like a, an impact on the team, so everything like related to to manage like people, um, the TA needs to 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 take care of and and manage. They also need to give everybody the opportunity to take risk and not like 
tell everyone, okay, you do that, you do like this. No, please take risk, try to learn, and try to grow in the direction that you like to. And I'll be there to help you and to uh, provide the, the assistance if you need. So, they already have a lot on, on their plates, right? So obviously, uh, TAs need to organize their, their time. They have so much to do and they are involved in so many levels of the organization, of the project process, that they, they have to deal with a lot of interruption. When you are working, I don't know, in the same office, everyone, well, someone can just walk to you with a question or asking for assistance, and, and you are interrupted, right? You need to stop what you're doing, focus on the person, and okay, like, shift your, your attention, shift your focus, and you have to deal a lot with interruption when you're a TA. So it is, uh, it is very important that the TAs uh, manage their time efficiently. They need to stay in control of the, the workload because they have so much to do and they are so often interrupted by people that they absolutely need to find some strategies to be able to stay in control. So that means, for example, a strategy would be, okay, three hours per day, I will isolate myself in a, in a room alone and I will work on my task, I will focus and I won't be interrupted. That's, that can be a strategy. Or, I don't know, I will start earlier than everybody, so during, I don't know, two hours in the morning, I know that no one is gonna be there to ask me a question and I can focus on my work. And then the rest of the time I can be available to help and to assist the team. So that's, that's something, just a small story for me. <laughs> I cannot do that. This is something, as a developer, so not involved on all the levels of the, the project, if a colleague like turn and ask me a question, I cannot say, okay, no, I don't have time right now. I'm busy, please shoot me a message on Slack or something, I will, I will help you when I, when I can. No, I drop everything I'm doing, and I'm like focusing on the person, trying to help, and once it's done, I'm trying to refocus on my task, and I'm like, what the hell was I doing? I don't remember. And it takes me probably up to five minutes to, oh, I don't know anymore, what? Okay, so that's something me, if I needed to, if I wanted to become, like build up those skills to become a TA, this is obviously something I would need to work on, for sure. I, I'm a people pleaser, and I cannot say no. That's a big problem. Yeah, I don't know if you, if some of you are in this, yeah? Okay, yeah, this is. Okay, so because they are so busy, TA must absolutely delegate. They cannot take all the technical tasks for them. Even if they wanted to, the most complicated task, the one that no one's like, oh my God, this is gonna be a, a, a bad task, uh, like a complex one. They would love to do it, but they don't have the time. They have so much other, like so many other responsibility that require that their time and attention, they cannot do everything. So they need to delegate to the team. They need to be able to trust the team. Plus, at the same time, it will give every, every developer the opportunity to take risk on the task, to learn, to grow. And again, the TA is gonna be there to help if needed and they are going to review the code base quality, they are going to review the pull request, they are going to, to be there to supervise, but they need to trust their team and give them the opportunity to, to take risk. That's very important. <laughs> 
I don't have my Bitmoji. I'm so, so disappointed. Okay. Uh, TAs understand the big picture. As developer, we are assigned with development task. And we just, we just solve it, right? We just solve the task and we don't really um, try to understand how this task is going to connect with like the broader system, the broader, uh, the big picture. But the TAs, they need to be there to give this context to the developer. They need to, to give them this understanding. Okay, this task, that's how it's going to like connect, what's, what is going to impact. Um, you need to, to understand uh, the connection with the broader system. And also you need to understand uh, the, the deployment environment within uh, which the, the project is living. So TAs are responsible to, to um, give this understanding to their team. TAs know the business. So a TA is obviously going to be efficient by communicating, uh, communicating with technical people, their team, but non-technical people, as I said earlier. That means communicating with uh, project manager, marketing clients. I don't know, they can talk about uh, the, the, the project scope, like the, the career path. Okay, I, I have developers in my team. That's what they would like to do. That's what they would like to like, tend to, okay? So they, they need to, to be able to communicate uh, and translate the technical language, the technical con context that we are using in the development team, they, they need to be able to translate it to plain language, to be able to communicate with non-technical people. That's not something everyone can naturally do. I don't think I can do it. Yes. Yet. <laughs> that's something, yeah, that, that's something you need to build up for sure. Make making everyone understand the technical language and vocabulary. Okay, now uh, I, uh, I ask uh, two TAs at Therefore to answer a few questions and they kindly accepted. So uh, I'm gonna ask some questions to uh, Clément, who is here today. <laughs> technical architect uh, at Therefore. He's been in the company for five years now and he was uh, um, initially hired as a developer and is now a, a, a TA. And the other person is Richard. Richard has been uh, hired like a few months ago as a TA and he's working remotely from Montreal. So that's kind of two different profile and that's two interesting way to see the TA role and how they manage to be a TA at their floor. So Clément, you have been a part of their floor team for more than five years. What was your evolution within the company during all these years and how did you become a TA? So Clément says, I'm officially started, uh, I officially started at Therefore in 2013 and I was like a, as a web developer. I need to click. Um, at the time, Therefore was still a small company and there was no real like uh, hierarchy, right? Over the years, I naturally became a technical leader for the bigger project. So that was like a natural, it took naturally the lead on the bigger project, right? And when we started like to get bigger client and bigger project and that we redesigned the internal organization, we introduced this TA role a few, few months ago. Uh, well, it was actually logical that I became a, I became a TA and it, it's, yeah, just a, a natural evolution. We were all 
expecting Clément to become a TA. It was already, he was actually a TA before knowing it. So how important is the TA role within the team? Could you tell a difference since the role has been introduced in the landscape? Uh, before having a TA, we would just split the development task between the developer and just work on it. There was no real thinking about the process, right? And then TA, they bring the development, the web development, as like an intellectual process. The TA is more about it's less about doing, really. It's more about researching, brainstorming, investigating new methods, new tools, new process, more about training and orga organization-wide. A TA also uh, allow, allows uh, standardization of processes. Uh, the increase uh, of the overall quality and mature, maturing developers' talents. Besides the technical expertise that you acquired as a developer, what are the other skills that you had to build for the role? He says, for me, one of the first critical skills skill is to be able to manage your time <laughs> yes. and focus on your task and dealing with interruption. Yeah, since I'm a TA, I'm lucky if I'm not interrupted at least once every five minutes. And I suppose it's literally, yes. You need to be able to refocus on your task. Oops. <laughs> refocus on your task uh, as quickly as possible. You also need to be able to invest some time in tasks that don't like that don't look important at first sight right like reviewing new tools or and everything while a big deadline is coming because apparently deadlines are always coming there's always going to be a deadline so you shouldn't focus on the deadline another skill that is needed is uh, negotiating with humans yes most of my responsibilities are in relation with humans, and most of the time that means I have to negotiate with um, project manager about the deadline, the staffing, uh, with my developers to like make sure they follow the processes, the standards, that they are learning new technologies. I don't know if I have now. Uh, I need to negotiate with the clients about the scope of the project, I need to negotiate with other TAs in the team. We are talking about the tools that we, we want to use, like the processes, and the DevOps guys. Please stop breaking the server all the time. <laughs> I need to negotiate with the hierarchy. <laughs> so do you think that any good developer uh, would be uh, a good TA and why? Well, if someone wants to become a TA, he or she can do it. Where there is a will, there is a way. I just found this on like Google Translate. <laughs> because I'm not sure. Uh, but yeah, becoming a TA, it's not like uh, just a title or a promotion, you don't become a super developer. No, it's a total role shift and you need to know it. You, you need to, to be aware of that. Also, the technical part of the job is something, but like there is also the management part uh, of, the, of the job that we are not prepared for. So you need to learn. Uh, the rest, like the, the human side, you, you need to, to learn it by yourself. And it's a lot of study. Because becoming a TA is a lot of study. But thankfully, with the internet, uh, there are a lot of resources uh, out there. And it helps you uh, evolving uh, from technical to management slash leadership uh, role. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about the resources later. So Richard, Richard, you recently joined the Therefore team as a TA. What were the challenges that you faced as a new member of the team? So first of all, being a virtual team makes it very challenging to be a TA because I was used to be sitting next to my developer and just like help them to find a solution. Now I need to be able to uh, take advantage of the communication tools like screen sharing, voice chat, and it's, it's very different, right? So, um, what would be the differences between your role as a TA at Therefore and the previous roles uh, that you held in other companies? Well, at Therefore, uh, we use a pure agile development process and um, it's relatively small sprints. It's two week sprints. So he says, this allow me to uh, make more frequent reviews and I have like a deeper understanding of the coding style of my colleagues. Uh, the maturity of the front end developer is also helpful as I don't, I, I don't have to worry about the theming part, I can just focus on the back end. What are for you the qualities of a good TA? So Richard says, the most important thing is to be closer to the people rather than the code. It's not very easy, right? <laughs> uh, you need to be able to delegate and trust people you need to be able to let your developer find their own solution and help them improve it rather than dictating them what to do, right? Um, but he says technical skill is still important, of course. So you need to be able to do a thorough code review. You need to be able to predict the need of the clients to be able to react. And you need to be able to think of solutions that can evolve with, we evolve with time. So I wasn't that far from the truth when I got this answer. So what would be your advice to the developers who would like to become a TA? Well, you need to be ambitious and let people know that you want to be a TA show people that you are ambitious. Because being a TA, it's a lot of responsibilities, but most of the employers are going to um, uh, appreciate you stepping up and like taking the responsibilities. Other than that, like experience and like, yeah, working on a lot of project to, to, to build up your technical experience is obviously uh, very important. So, based on that, how can one become a TA? Well, it's a, a little bit of a summary that uh, all, we, uh, all we, we, we said. You need to build up your technical skills and knowledge, right? So technical part is obviously very important to be a TA you need to have a strong technical experience. You don't need to be the best dev, award-winning, uh, top-notch of your company to become a TA, no. You need to be good enough so your colleagues, your teammates respect you and respect your technical choice. Uh, you also need to acquire a complementary set of, of skills, which is leadership slash management slash mentoring that we are not building up as developers. So leadership, communication, supportiveness, ability to understand the big picture, uh, the human side of the job, uh, communicating with technical, non-technical, that's stuff that don't naturally uh, come 
uh, for everybody, right? So you need to uh, acquire those skills. And for that, of course, uh, a lot of useful resources uh, exist on, on the internet. Leadership and mentoring skills, uh, like uh, resources. You have, like, of course, on the internet a lot of articles, videos. Um, I found some books. Uh, I put a use, uh, like a useful list of resources, a list of useful resources, um, on my blog article on therefore.ca slash blog. You can uh, find the, the resources there. Okay, so now, uh, maybe you are not sure yet if you want to become a TA or not. Let's take the test together. <laughs> Let's start there. Do you love coding? If yes, okay, you love coding. But do you love humans? <laughs> yes, okay. Do you love studying? Yes, okay, you can become an expert. No? Don't love studying? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, you, you love coding. Uh, you uh, don't love. I I I don't know what I did. I I probably switched those two. I'm sorry. If you love coding, if you love humans, and if you love standards, you can become a TA. That's a good like uh, career path for you. If you don't love standards, you can become a WordPress developer. <laughs> If you, love, uh, if you don't love coding, okay. Do you love humans? Yes? Okay. Do you love riding a bicycle? Except that the bicycle is on fire. You're on fire. Everything's on fire. And you are in hell. That's your thing, okay. You can become a, a project manager of, or strategy. <laughs> I couldn't. I just couldn't. <laughs> And if you don't, if you don't like, well, just try again because you have to obviously make a choice at some point. You have to love something, otherwise it's very sad. So I hope it's going to, to help you uh, figure out the, the, the career evolution for you. Okay, now, uh, are there any TAs in the room? Yeah, we know. Really. Uh, okay, I'd like to have like an explanation for that. <laughs> like the yeah, I'd say kind of yes, but new, newly so. Newly. Newly so. So yeah, still kind of small into the room. Okay, so uh, if you don't mind, I would like to have uh, maybe your opinion about this uh, this talk. Well, that all the information that I just shared, and as a new uh, newly like fresh TA. Would you have any anything to, to say like to developers uh, who would like maybe to, to think about becoming a TA and uh, yeah yeah I think I mean the, the way they touched on it how being in these different you know foot in different different pieces of it project management development business um, I think that's like spot on and I think that's how I kind of got into it because I enjoy being interested in lots of different things I don't necessarily have one single passion, I kind of like to spread myself across all of them, so I think it kind of naturally gravitated towards this type of role, so if you find that you don't necessarily like, love to deep dive on one thing and you like to keep moving on other things, then I thought that was kind of fit into that, that nature, because when I get tired of working in the business side, I can then do the technical side, and if I get tired of the technical side, I go into the research side or whatnot, so it's kind of nice that, that for a balance. Okay, uh, did, did you have any, like, um, w were, were there any, like, challenges for you when, when you became a TA, uh, something that you were not really expecting, uh, and, and you had, like, for example, to build up, s like, some skills and you... Yeah, the time management thing is a huge thing, just because, again, getting pulled in lots of different directions. Um, I think some of the project management 
dig into that to make sure that um, you know you're properly, properly resourcing and being able to communicate resourcing for the stakeholders. You know. Okay. So that's kind of the one thing I'm still focusing on and finding value in learning. All right. Thanks. Uh, anyone? Uh, who, who would like to share, like, I don't know, a tip or something? Any, any other, no? Time management for the next presentation, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we need to uh, hurry a little bit, I guess. Um, so, uh, is there any developer in the room and maybe who would like to uh, be interested in, in a TA, like, career path? Is that something? something that interests you? Maybe. Maybe not. Uh, did, did you guys learn something yesterday that, uh, yesterday, today, that uh, you, you didn't really know about and it enlightened some, something? Uh, sort of had a role in the past on parts of us. I one of the things you touched on there was uh, being able to translate or being able to communicate with the business side in a non-technical way. So translating the technical to non-technical level was, was a big part of uh, my experience in the past 30 years. Okay. That's one of the things that, uh, like you say, as, as developers, it's not natural, uh, but it's something that was an important part of the world that I found in these Okay. Okay, thanks. Maybe I'm mistaken, but I, I did think that at least part of the role would be in a DevOps capacity or a solutions architect capacity, where you, you know, grab, take for instance a set of servers or a set of specs and build up infrastructure on top of the role or on top of the responsibilities that you have already put up. Is, is that the case or generally? Uh, I mean, generally, I don't know. I know that uh, therefore like the DevOps part, like the DevOps well, part. We uh, a DevOps guide yeah. that, and we start from the strategy where we know exactly what we need. Um, and as a TA, you always like check if the DevOps is okay with that and like, you make sure that the strategy makes sense to for what you can do. Uh, but you're, you're not doing it like you're just saying, all right, this is all we need to do it. And you give it back to the DevOps. Why, like, it's a lot of negotiation between two people. You guys want to always create this stuff, which you don't need. <laughs> so it's, it's a lot of negotiation. But it's not really about it. It's But again, this is at their fault, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah most TA is not a time to become TA. It's quite uh, knowledgeable. Yeah. Just something that can add to gain knowledge and experience. Yeah. It's just not the primary role. No. Yeah. Okay, thank you uh, guys for sharing. Uh, let's draw a conclusion then. So as intermediate or senior developer, you may reach a point in your career uh, where you're asking yourself about the possibilities of evolution within your company. You re if you realize that you care and value the people as much as you care and value the code you are writing. If you want to add more value across the company and if you truly want to help other people, well, the technical architect may be uh, an attractive way uh, forward for you. And I hope this presentation gave you a better idea of the TA role and its responsibility and that it provided uh, some direction for you to build new skills and support uh, your career path. Any question? All right, uh, quickly, just a, a reminder again, if you have like a unique challenge for our team at Therefore, just please uh, come and talk to us uh, at the booth or shoot us an email uh, on the Toronto at the uh, email address. Uh, don't forget uh, yeah, to visit our booth because you can register and try to win an Amazon Echo Spot. 
Also, don't forget to check uh, my blog article uh, about uh, TAs on uh, therefore.ta slash blog, and you will see like a list of uh, useful resource uh, that I talk uh, today. Uh, you can also check out uh, our case study on Drupal.org if you can remember this uh, quite long URL. <laughs> and uh, thank you, everybody. Thank <laughs> you.